Right off the bat for this video, I've grabbed some sand, and I'm gonna do the thing I said I'd do last video before realizing I don't have enough sand on hand to do it. Already just doing this big gravel patch, I realized it isn't gonna take very long. I actually already did the whole river leading to the lake and just forgot to record it, but that didn't take super long either. I crafted a bit of the sand to sandstone, which is such a waste, but at this point I have so much sand it doesn't really matter. Initially, I was thinking I'd cover up any sandstone that peeked through, but you don't really notice it from afar. Not to mention when I actually finish the second half of this build, which won't be until like episode 8 sometime next year, I will get the patches of sandstone if I feel that they disrupt the build. I ran out of sand so I flew back to the monument and grabbed a few shulkers. There were still some chests on this bit of the shore that I shoved sand in while draining the lake back in episode 3. I considered covering up this little hole in the middle, but I instead sanded it. I might do something with it eventually, but that won't be for many episodes. I moved on to the lake floor near the small dam, and that was mostly in the river biome, which means the floor is mostly dirt, clay, and gravel. There were a few holes and stray blocks I missed, but after that, I was basically done with the sand. Yeah, this isn't like a huge project. I removed the haste beacon in the cave. I'm gonna move it over to the mesa and get terracotta for the monument. I found a random hillside here that I would be okay demolishing and placed a beacon upon on it. I could probably dig a hole and place it underground for maximum haste coverage, but I can move it if need be, and this is more convenient. I'm aware a level 1 beacon with haste can still instamine terracotta if you have the right pick, but the maxed beacon has a way higher range, so I'm going for that. After mining a little bit of terracotta, I got harangued by some pillagers, and they were actually kind of fucking me up. After that, I started collecting terracotta one color at a time, which was a much better method than what I had been doing before. After like an hour, I had used up both of my netherite picks and had to switch to a diamond one. Gross. I didn't totally use it up, but I realized I should probably get a few more diamond picks. I crafted three, and I enchanted two perfectly on the first try, and for the third, I started rolling enchants at 99 levels and finished at 35. Good lord. I flew over and realized I should probably get mending and efficiency 5 and stuff on at least some of them. I got two fortune 3 picks and one silk touch, so ideally I'd actually get all silk touch and have just one fortune pick, which I already have whenever I need it. I then went over and put all of my sand into regular wood chests because I needed the shulkers to bring over terracotta. After that, I got back to mining. Then I was done mining and placed my shulkers down outside of the monument, before converting the blocks, though I decided that it's time I drain the inside of the monument first. I grabbed my sponge collection, built another portal on the netherrack disc, built another nether tunnel, and used Maladiel's crazy house of sponge for what could be the last time. I'm not sure how extreme the sponge count for this build will be. I took the haste beacon next. It should make breaking down the internal walls of the monument much easier if I can instamine. In case it wasn't obvious, this beacon isn't permanent. I'm gonna build one at bedrock once the build is done. I drained the top room of the monument before realizing I don't have a hoe to break sponges. Relatively small rooms like this one are okay, but once I get to the bigger rooms downstairs, there may be problems with just using the sponge method. Breaking part of the walls like this before draining is a stupid idea, it just makes the draining harder. I completely forgot about this little in-between area that's still full of water, so I'll have to do that eventually. Draining this room off to the side was a little treacherous, particularly with the focused guardian spawns. I also realized lighting this area will be a pain. I don't believe mobs spawn in ocean monuments, even dry ones, but just for the aesthetics, I'd rather have it be bright in there. Clearing out the gold room was strangely easy considering I wasn't even sectioning off different areas. I was starting to get low on sponge after that. You never really know how many rooms are in the monument until you've had to drain all of them. The guardians weren't spawning in the drained areas, but there were still so many of them flopping around. They make a great sound, by the way. Down to the last stack of sponges, I was draining this area, which stretches around the whole monument. Most of the monument is dry now, so guardian spawns are really focused within this tiny area. I broke some walls up top, I'm hoping to collect my sponges. If I don't break them and miss collecting them, I should get all of these sponges back eventually, even if I don't immediately find them, because the monument will be totally cleared eventually. I returned to tearing down the internal monument walls, and after filling my inventory with prismarine, I tore down my little glass blockade at the monument entrance. It's no longer necessary and impedes my ability to exit the monument. I wasn't 100% done drying the internal rooms, as well my Mining, I discovered more, which I had missed. I was soon actually completely out of dry sponges and replenished my sponge supply after a little more teardown. Right at the final stretch of destruction, my pick ran out of durability, so I grabbed a diamond one. Less than 10 minutes later, I was actually done breaking every single block in the monument. There's a ton of rubble on the ground and I'm trying to collect it. Chances are I'll have a build in the future that I need a ton of prismarine for, though I'll probably have a guardian farm by then, so this is really unnecessary. 
Now that I'm done with the destruction and part of the resource gathering, I'm gonna meet you in some live commentary before I continue on with the build. Okay, so I actually meant to record this at, like, the end of the last video. This exact clip. Uh, so, the last time I recorded one of these, I had just dropped the sand. And since then, I have placed all of this glass, got rid of all, gotten rid of all of this sand, and, uh... Let me go in here. I do not have a shovel. I built a beacon in here, and I have now hollowed out the ocean monument. Uh, this really only took a couple hours, the, the hollowing part. Um, I, I didn't- I was expecting the guardians to be a pretty big issue. They really weren't. Uh, so I want to explain what my plan for all of this shit is, because this is all terracotta. So. I went over to the Mesa biome and just destroyed it. And I gathered all of that. You, uh, you probably already saw that. Um, so my plan is to replace all of all of this prismarine uh, with terracotta. <laughs> so that's going to take probably, uh, I don't know, like a few days maybe. Uh, then again, I estimated, uh, that the sand alone would take a month, so I don't really trust my word on that. But, this time, I- I'm really, like, thinking about the scope of the work, and really, like, if I'm playing regularly, a few days is probably pretty accurate, though I am gonna be pretty busy. Um, I should also say why I did not record a clip at the end of the last video. Um, so I intended to. And then I got a power outage that lasted for two days. <laughs> uh, so yeah. I'm- I'm- I'm back after that. It was nice because I wasn't constantly thinking about Minecraft and editing a YouTube video. I want to talk about my plan for this place, after I've done all of the terracotta stuff. So, this sand layer, uh, the sand stuff, will- will be going, don't worry. I do have a slightly more complicated plan that will still involve a bunch of sand along these sides. So, I'm going to convert this into sort of a circle. It's gonna have, like, like, ridges around here that are gonna be, you know, vaguely circular but still sort of adhering to this shape. Uh, and then I am going to do split down the middle. It will be half, like, red sand and terracotta, and half just sand and sandstone. So it's sort of like desert and mesa. I really think after that, this will really look... Because as it is, it kind of looks rainbow, which is not exactly the aesthetic I was going for. I think with the sand and the terracotta monument underneath, it will actually start looking more Mesa-y and less, you know, rainbow. I have not yet figured out an exact methodology for how I'll distinguish the blocks within here. Because I, I don't want to have it just be solid, like, like the, all the same terracotta. I want to distinguish, like, regular prismarine, prismarine bricks, dark prismarine, maybe sea lanterns. Like, I could probably just, like, do, like, I don't know, whatever for that. Maybe just, like, redstone lanterns, because that, that would kind of fit the aesthetic. So I'm going to have it the thing sort of, like... Like I said, it's going to be sort of circular, and then it's going to come in, and I want the the sand to sort of go, like, a little up the sides of the, the glass part of the monument, and I'm going to have a little, like, like sort of, like, basin area here, where it, it's it sort of great, great, it sort of, like, slopes, it's not just straight up, for, like, along the walls of the monument. I predict this whole thing will take about two weeks of regular play to finish the rest of this. However, I probably won't be playing regularly because I'll be kind of busy with other stuff. So I will let you know after a montage in which I will do all of this shit. I'll see you on the other side.
Okay, so you probably have a lot of questions. First of all, why is my horse here? My camel's also here, but he's not right here. Uh, so I moved them. That That's the answer to that question. I moved them over here. I placed a little water. I broke a bit of glass so they could get down. Uh, I've also named them the boss, and the leaper is over there. He's the camel. I have taken quite a long time uh, between finishing the montage and recording this clip. And you may notice that I have seven enchanted golden apples now. Um, and also, I sound like this. Uh, why I sound like this is easier to explain. Uh, I got a really bad sickness, and I lost my voice. The worst I ever have. Like, I... It wasn't like, oh, I shouldn't talk, I should rest my voice. It was like, I could not talk if I wanted to. I was incapable of speech. Uh, for like, five days, maybe? As for the Summon Enchanted Golden Apples, I went to... So, I, it started with me wanting to get thorns on my armor, and I, I have thorns armor. I did not put it on my existing set. I still have my existing set, which I can wear uh, when I need to capture stuff, like capture mobs or whatever, uh, and not have them die to my thorns. Um, but to get that, I wanted to take this new set of armor and get uh, the silence armor trim for it. Because uh, I knew I wasn't just going to do rib or whatever I have on that one again, because I wanted to differentiate it. The thing is, the silence armor trim only spawns in ancient cities. You motherfucker, give me my sand. And I probably rated three or four, and I did not find it. I'm currently using the ward armor trim. Uh, the thing is, uh, ancient cities have a lot of golden apples, so I found a few. I might go into voiceover and summarize a lot of things I did between the montage and now. So... Another one of those things was that I went to the nether, and I got uh, a proper nether highway system, which I'll show you in a second. But here, I have this little road, which connects over to the main highway. It says 87 meters. I, I calculated all of this. The spawn south, 32 meters. And iron farm north, 223, 108. I should actually put an M be accurate so in regards to my my illness i i got i got sick maybe two weeks ago and then it was like a little a little bad like coughing a lot for like a week and then i lost my voice for like five days and like just yesterday i was speaking in full sentences that's that's how far i've come i'm able to speak just long enough to record this and survive Actually, this is my second time recording this. Ender Mike. This is my second time recording this. That one. The portal. This is my second time recording this because I... The first time, I actually wasn't recording. I forgot to hit the button. As for the lore around these places, I'm gonna do a big lore episode where I explain all of that. Um, but basically, the lore between this desert area and the ocean monument is like pretty closely intertwined however i don't want to have the lore for all of the areas in my world connected they can be totally separated you know independent of each other i i do like these two builds being intertwined i i just i really just want to have the capability to you know build outside of this sort of story is like I, I don't want to feel like i can't build something because it doesn't fit with the lore really there's not too much to summarize i did a lot of stuff None of it was especially interesting, though. Like I did, I went and traded up golden carrots because I I was running out of I was running low on food. I also got a ton of fireworks. I have like three shoulders of fireworks between all my storage. I don't know that I've really built anything, which is what I'd rather focus on for something like this. So this is kind of the end of this project, and that marks an interesting point uh, in my like personal Minecraft experience. Because I, it has been a very long time since I have finished a cosmetic build like this. I've done lots of farms and some of them have been, you know, in YouTube series that you can watch still now. Uh, but it's it's been quite a quite a quite a couple of years since I did a like primarily cosmetic build, which had limited functional value. I mean, this this functions as a home, but I really don't need it to function as a home. I can build a different home. If I want to, I can I can build a much lower maintenance home than this. By the way, this will require regular maintenance because Enderman pick up sand and cacti. 
Uh, so I'll have to replace those every now and then. There's also, uh, this... This just goes straight to the, the seabed. I have not done any terraforming here. Um, and I'm, I may honestly just keep it like that, because it's, it's not... Like, I'm not paying attention down here. There's really no need for it to be any more complicated than it is. I am actually really happy with how this outer ring came out. I was expecting it to look like kind of ugly and maybe take away from the build a little bit. No, this this looks great. I am very glad I went for this sort of thing. Uh, the inside is a little blocky, uh, but that was kind of intentional because within the lore, the, the lore, this is not a natural phenomenon. This was constructed. There's lore around exactly who was constructing it that you'll see. Uh, but yeah, this is officially goodbye to this project. Not goodbye to this build. I'll still be around here all the time. Uh, and if I ever stream, you'll probably get to see quite a lot of this. But this is, uh, this is the conclusion of this project. It's finally done. Boss. Hey, boss. Okay. It's bittersweet because I have really enjoyed working on this project. It was a lot. It was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Also, tell me if they want to dye those beacons a different color. I might, I might change their color eventually. Um, also, there is one thing I want to hear from you, and this, you probably won't see this change for three or four episodes. Um, do you prefer having more of the scripted content, or do you just want it to be montages broken up by this kind of Let's Play content, where I sort of recap, recap and explain my future plans? Um, it may, it was probably in the montage, but I also, yeah, I built this big sugarcane farm, which has been ludicrously efficient. It is, in fact, too efficient, probably. I make more, uh, sugarcane and gunpowder than I could ever need, so I, I just go in and, and I run through with hitboxes on, which makes it way easier to see, and I pick up all the, the sugarcane. Here, we're finally at the end. I have a big project planned over the next two or three videos, probably. Um, that will, you know, be over the next two or three months, as these videos are gonna end up being basically monthly. Uh, but until then, I will bid you farewell. And finally, conclude this project. Bye-bye.